XWC spring finals uh, for EU season and more. I mean, he just could not stop for about a year straight. This is definitely going to be a monster match. Surgical Goblin and CMQ have known each other for a very long time. They've been, uh, you know, doing a little bit of trash talking, ribbing each other in the past. We'll finally get a chance to see here now who's going to edge out ahead. You know, would be nice to see a big, big, long show match with these guys later. But uh, we're going to get an excellent preview uh, of their competitive performance here, representing Team Liquid and uh, Immortals, respectively. McHugh playing the very cheap uh, Expo deck that we, I think it's Expo at least, earlier in chat and told me that you would either pick Skeletons or Mega Minion, but usually not both. Looks right. like to me this looks like an Expo deck, but I could be wrong. Hunter comes down, the, one of the newest cards added to the game, a shotgun style character. He's got the little uh, David Crockett hat coming out the back there. He's going to start shooting a ton of damage up close, a little bit of damage at range, but a good wide spread for taking out things like Minion Horde. Very well played. I'll agree with you. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, Steam is probably playing an Expo deck here. Yep, there it is. I called it. I don't know if there's any delay on broadcast. Oh. I so called that. But oh my god, a peck out the left lane. Definitely going to oh. put a big old hole in that uh, Expo. Gets the lock, and with two chops, that thing is down. I Heavy hitters coming in from Surgical Goblin. A small but important detail there. McHugh put his Ice Spirit one tile too close, and it got chopped by the P.E.K.K.A. instead of jumping and freezing. And while that's only a second and a half and about 100 damage, yeah. that can really make a lot of difference against something like P.E.K.K.A. that is very slow to swing. Right. You, can, you have the Expo and the Mega Minion just working it over for an extra second and a half. Oh, here comes the Hunter. Boom! Oh. One shot to Electro Wizard, and that's why he sees play. He's a ranged attacker that's great at killing other ranged attackers. When your Musketeer's trying to shoot you at max range, drop the Hunter right up front, and it will just blast the Musketeer away. Goodness gracious. That's a beautiful lock out the right lane. That Expo chipping away at the tower. It's going to put C. McHugh in a slight lead here. You see 1395 on his right side tower relative to Surgical Goblin now dipping into the triple digits. McHugh is one of the most consistent Expo players in the world. He is just a monster Siege player. He uses his exceptional mechanical placement and timing what? to take the most advantage of it. We have a defensive Expo. We saw this earlier, so this is definitely a strategy that is not hey. an accident here. What was that fireball? Didn't hit the tower. Uh, I did hit the right oh, side okay, tower and the right king side. and the P.E.K.K.A., but yeah, still a, a little bit of an atypical play here. It looks like CMQ is willing to go for the spell oh, cycle yeah. win at this point, thinking that he can just get the uh, defensive lead over Surgical Goblin and uh, make this a, a, a long game here. Hunter in the back is getting lots of nice pop shots off against the, all of these uh, melee attackers coming in close. Royal Ghost going to give him a little bit of trouble, but the Hunter survives and will get another few shots off against the remainder of these troops. And it looks like 665 remaining on that tower. Defensive X was going to come down. McHugh's at least playing it right in the sense that he only took 100 damage on the last push, but he did 200 damage from a fireball. So we have 665. That's what? Two fireballs, two logs? Ooh, nice. Yeah, pulls so over a bunch of those troops with just some really cheap cycle. Ice Spirit and Skeletons giving him some good value there. Now, the Mega Minion will get distracted, won't even get a chance to shoot at that Royal Ghost. Uh, Royal Ghost going invisible, of course, whenever it's not getting hit off on anything, and the Mega Minion floats on into the Ewiz to meet his ultimate demise. 238, and it looks like with the lead that CMQ has right now, all that he has to do is just defend and keep these pushes off of tower. Surgical Goblin has got a lot uh, of heavy hitters, but he hasn't been able to make it to that tower yet. And as you mentioned, it's really difficult to uh, build up big pushes against spell cycling decks, because if you put something behind your king tower, it's just, then they just spell it, right? So he has to build up a push somehow not putting anything too close. Oh, the minions! Man. The minions are locked onto the tower! It's down to under 300. Now this one more poison and log will do it. So X so McHugh has to switch over to Expo himself. He can't just rely on fireballs. Here comes the P.E.K.K.A. It's blocked by the That's ice it. golem at the river. But you think a fireball is going to come through and take the game here? Oh Surge yeah, three, absolutely. Surge four, has got this, man. Miners I, we got to see that again later on. The Turnabout right there was incredible. Great plays from Surgical Goblin. Able to get that right side offer here. And it looks like they're going to be playing, yeah, that eight card setup uh, that was uh, amazing in the spring season last year. It's, it's been dipping down a little bit in usage. Some players have even swapped in Valkyrie instead of the Knight in mm -hmm. order to uh, take advantage of the buff to Valkyrie in the, in the nerf tonight. But we're going to see a classic Goblin Blade duel here now. So here's why I think Trainer Luis made this challenge. He, besides believing he's a very good log bait player. Right. Uh, if you remember during the fall EU season, Adam was considered the best log bait player in the world. And in one match, Surgical Goblin played a log bait mirror against Adam and won. And that was a, considered a crazy bold play to play the best log bait player in the world and win the mirror match. So I think Trainer Luis is trying to call his shot Babe Ruth style against Surgical Goblin. Huh. 
I think Surgical Goblin's got the better uh, of the first minute here. Looks like he's got a couple of nice chip uh, hot, uh, shots off under the left lane, but getting that King Tower activated is a uh, real big advantage here. You know, they said Classical Log Bait. I'm not sure if they're uh, allowed to switch out between Tornado and Inferno Tower. Those were both used uh, quite frequently in the log bait archetype. We've seen Tornado now from Surgical Goblin. Right side is going to be a uh, log rolling in to try to support this Goblin Barrel push. One of the Goblins makes it onto the tower, though, and one of the... Uh, and, and, and there's no King Tower activation. That Tornado just logs out of the hand. night away. Yeah. Logs out of hand, so you could see maybe a Goblin Barrel right now, but Surgical Goblin already has a pretty good setup because he was able to Tornado Goblins to his King Tower much earlier, so that Surgical Goblin King Tower is actually is activated right now. Oh, Log's coming in! Great placement! You put the Goblin Barrel up front, so all of this, the Goblin Gang has to run towards you. You hit the Log, and it cleans out most of the Goblin Gang. Mm, beautiful read by Trainer Luis. We yeah. saw an Ice Spirit there to catch all three of those Goblins landing right in the same spot. You can see Surgical Goblin far ahead in the damage race here, but it's not a, a, a lead that Trainer Luis couldn't come back from here. We'll see uh, yeah. if this uh, Elixir advantage that Trainer Luis has right now can be leveraged into a counter push. Yeah, Log Bait is a classic one tower deck. It's not going to try to 2 1 you or 3 crown you. It's just trying to take one tower. Remember, the eighth Although in card. Although in, in the mirror match, it could be slightly different. In these, uh, the eighth card is Rocket for Ooh. both decks, right? So even though, yeah, there's a 200 damage advantage, they're both just going for Rocket Cycle. Right now, Trainer Luis would win that. Or, or, I'm sorry, uh, Surgical Goblin would win that exchange because he was a little bit ahead, but Trainer Luis is going to try to catch up by using a few Princess and Goblin Gang tricks. So Trainer Luis soaking a Goblin Gang out the right side is a very aggressive, ballsy move. He's saying, basically, I'm confident that this is going to be a 1-0 game, and I know that I can outcycle you to get that victory. Right now, though, he's down by about 400 hit points. Surgical Goblin on defense with a Princess in back. He's going to start getting some chip damage against the knife. Protecting his own Princess with a Knight play of his own, though, at that right side bridge. Looks like Surgical Goblin is now going to have to contend with a Goblin Barrel going out back, catches it with the Goblin Gang perfectly, and he'll go on the counterattack with another rocket flying in. I think that's three times now Luis has put the Goblin Barrel in the exact same spot, and that's, I think, your Surgical Goblin is good at picking up those patterns and taking advantage of them. Here we are, one rocket's gonna come in, I think, for Surgical Goblin and try to finish this game off. Yep, Rocket and Log will do it. Surgical Goblin has got the win here, just needs to get to that elixir and hold off against one ah! final rocket assault. Backside's down to 916, good rocket hit there, but Surge with the win throws those final two spells and will defeat Trainer Luis 1-0 in this game. You know, okay, both players are ready, wiping the sweat off their palms, ready to get these hits off. Oh crap, with the hat on, he looks like he's in the darkness there. Surgical Goblin, uh, a, a little bit more out in the, uh, the brightness. So since we're in Texas, I think we can give him some uh, Old West analogs. Aw, crap, with the black hat. I think it's got to make him the outlaw in this matchup. You know, uh, I know, Woody, you're from Texas originally, but we also have in the crowd one of the most famous Clash Royale Texans, God Slayer from ah. the spring season. He's got his big old 10-gallon hat sitting out in the crowd. Uh, he, he's local boy, so he was able to come on down here and yeah. uh, see the show. So he's hanging out. We'll probably see him tomorrow in the $20,000 Open. Ooh, good chance of that. The qualifiers are happening right now, so make sure to come on <laughs> down the South by Southwest if you want to get a chance to compete in them. Great strike from that Sparky out the right lane. Tornado will allow Surge to pull that giant onto the King Tower and get a nice defensive edge here. But what can he do against a Skarmy? Nice two for three trade with the ice going out back. Surgical Goblin is one of the most aggressive Tornado players What's in the game. What's our crap doing? He's not even looking at the screen! He dropped a Mega Minion and figured that would be enough to defend. I guess so. That's, I think, you know, one of the cool things about this is starting to see that the personalities of the teams <laughs> evolve. And if there's one word I would use to describe Immortal so far, it's confident. All of them, whether or not the results bear it out, are all pretty confident. C. McHugh definitely, uh, he, what, confidence is key. This is on his Twitter account. You can see it every time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Trainer Luis felt good about making that challenge. Like, ah, oh, I can beat you in a mirror match. Let me yeah. do that. And Ah, crap, sitting here playing stuff, looking around, pointing fingers. Confidence well and well humor. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, good, well mannered, good humored. Yeah. I think that uh, they're all clearly having having a lot of fun with the event today. Oh, oh no! Wow. wow, the guard shields all came off, and the splash was big enough to also hit that executioner. But I was saying, Surgical Goblin, one of the most aggressive tornado players in the game, he was one of the first players I saw to start tornadoing three musketeers all into the same lane. He's definitely willing to, to tornado, uh, obviously, goblin towers and things like, or goblin barrels to your tower. But he even does it to, like, unsupported giants and golems. Like, if you just let the tank get to the tower, it's like, nah, I'll just tornado to my king tower. I don't know if, it's, if you notice this or not. Ocrap just got hoisted by his own petard out that right side. Tried to send uh, the Sparky in to back up the uh, giant on the left lane, but the pushback from Sparky 
firing onto the defending troops uh, resulted in that target going down the right lane. This is a big hit. All right, now we're going for Surgical Goblin. Right side's getting chopped apart at Executioner. Uncontested. Mega Minion finally swipes him down, but that right side has been finished off. And uh, oh crap, has only got 24 seconds left to get this thing into overtime. I'm telling you, if you want to learn how to play Tornado at the top level, you got to watch Surgical Goblin's games. This dude pulls Tornado moves that I feel like no other player is able to do. So that's. One of the things that makes him stand out, Aw oh, Crap throws the minion horde down. I don't know if that was a joke or not, because he puts Skeleton Army right after. Um, but he is going to take this game. And you know what that means? Surgical Goblin is going to claim our $100 bounty for 3-0 sweeping the Immortals team. Well played to Surgical Goblin.